Okay, we're back for day two of our silver lab, as we're calling it. And I want you to take a minute and take a look at your um, reaction that occurred inside your, your beaker. You can see that we've gotten uh, we have quite a bit of silver that's deposited on our copper wire. Also notice there's a slight blue tint. I'll put this white paper behind it. Blue tint to the solution as well. Uh, now that's the result of copper ions uh, replacing the silver ions in that solution. We call this a single replacement reaction because the copper um, atoms turned into copper ions that went into solution. The silver ions that were in solution went into silver metal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shake that silver off of our copper wire as well as we can. So we'll pick up our copper wire and give it a good shake. We'll get as much of that off as we can. Looks like we did a pretty good job. That copper wire is bare. We're going to rinse this copper wire off the squirt of distilled water. And then what we're going to do, since we need to find the mass of this copper wire so we can determine um, how many copper atoms went into solution, how many copper atoms reacted, we're going to dip it in acetone. Now acetone ends up adhering to water molecules on the copper wire and acetone evaporates very quickly. So we'll give that a good shake and then we'll put that copper wire just on a paper towel and we'll let, let it sit there just for a few minutes and as it sits the acetone evaporates and when it evaporates it pulls water molecules away with it so it dries it nice and quickly for us. We'll get our balance set up because we're going to be needing that in a bit to find the mass of our copper wire that way we can determine how much copper reacted. Now you'll notice that we have a bunch of silver on the bottom of that beaker and we need to decant the water. Now to decant we'll do that into this sink over here. Hopefully you guys can get a good view of me doing this. We're going to hold our stirring rod over top of our beaker like this. And when we pour the water out, you'll notice that the water goes right down the stirring rod. Isn't that nice? And we'll pour that water off. We're decanting it right into the sink. Uh, we're trying not to shake it too much because we don't want any of the silver to go down to the sink. Inevitably, some will end up down the drain. But we're going to try to minimize that. So there we go. Decant as much of the solution as we can. And you can see we have our silver there. Now there might be a little bit of copper that was unreacted here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add about 10 milliliters of silver nitrate to this. Silver nitrate's in the brown bottle. Of course you folks know now that that reacts with with light. We'll add about 10 mils. We'll use a graduated cylinder. It can be a little more or a little less than 10. There's nothing magical about 10. It's just going to... There we go. I have about oh, 11 or 12 mils in there. We'll add that. And any copper that remains inside uh, mixed with that silver will now react with the silver nitrate and be converted to silver. Of course, we'll have some more copper ions that we'll need to decant here. Now, the instructions say for you guys to let that sit for 10 minutes. Um, but what I'm going to do for you is we're going to speed this up a bit. We're going to decant the silver nitrate. So let's just pretend we've let that sit for 10 minutes. Put our stirring rod over top of our beaker again, and we'll decant the silver nitrate. So back over to our sink so we can see that happening. And once again, we use that stirring bar. And you'll notice that there might be a few flecks of silver that end up down the sink. And we can't help that, but we're trying to preserve as much of that in the beaker as we can. Now we want to rinse that silver. So our next step is to rinse it with distilled water. So we're going to get our distilled water. And we're going to add uh, an aliquot of distilled water, about 10 mils. Once again, could be a little more, a little less. There's nothing magical about the 10. We'll add that to the silver. Swirl that around a little bit. We're trying to rinse any residue that might be on our flakes of silver. You're going to get your stirring rod and you'll mix it up ever so gently. We don't want to mix it up too much because we're going to decant that water here next. So now we'll decant again. 
Okay, they'll be really good at decanting by the time we're finished with this step. Once again, trying not to lose any silver. And let's see, we'll repeat that process again. So we're going to get another aliquot of about 10 mils. Add that to the beaker. Here's our stirring rod to mix that up ever so gently. Trying once again to rinse off those crystals of silver. So hopefully all we have inside this container is going to be silver atoms and a little bit of water. Once again, don't mix it too much. We'll decant that a second time. Whoops. Well, we decant the distilled water a second time, I should say. All right. And then we'll repeat that one more time. So our last 10 mil aliquot. Breaking up some of the larger chunks there, stirring it ever so gently. And our last decanting. Now, if you're one of the last classes, you'll be able to look down into the sink and you can see if there's any silver residue in the sink. There almost always is after this lab, um, especially if you're one of the later groups. Let's just take a quick peek and see if we can see any silver in there. Um, there might be a little few flecks right here. We did a pretty good job. Most of the silver that we collected during the reaction is, is still inside the beaker. Okay, now what I need you to do is you're going to get a pencil and on your beaker, you're going to put your locker number. So you can see that this one says 1A, because at one time this beaker was in 1A. And I happen to be using locker 1A right now. So I'm just going to make sure that does say 1A, or whatever my locker number is. And then we're going to move this to the drying oven in the back of the room, where we'll heat this um, for several hours. And as we heat it, the water will evaporate, and we'll have just our silver crystals in the bottom. Of course, we know the way that this beaker dry, remember? And when we come back next time, we'll be able to weigh the beaker with the silver in it. The difference, of course, will be the mass of silver. Now, before we quit for the day, let's not forget our copper wire. We had placed that on a paper towel a little while ago, and it's completely dried now. So we'll put that on the balance, and we'll find the mass of our copper wire Oops, after the reaction. And it looks like that says 1.39 grams. So I'm going to get my pen and my data table. And let's see. It says right here the mass of copper wire after, date, after the reaction is 1.39 grams. And so now we can calculate the amount of copper that reacted, which, of course, is the difference here. So we have a 1 here and a three there. So it looks like 0 0.31 grams of copper reacted overnight for us. And then of course we can convert that to moles of copper that reacted. And then when we come back next time, we'll be able to find the mass of the beaker with the silver in it. And after that, we'll be able to find the amount of silver that was produced and convert that to moles. And we're gonna, gonna, going to get a nice pretty mole ratio and we're going to compare that mole ratio to the balanced equation from step 7 and day 1. So let's see, step 7 and day 1, if we flip over to that, you can see the balanced equation should say 1 mole of copper reacts for or produces 2 moles of silver. So we're going to see if we get that 1 to 2 mole ratio. Okay, so that, uh, that awaits to be seen, and we'll do day three soon. So once again, there's your beaker with the silver metal in it. Okay, we're going to allow that to dry. I'll place it in the drying oven after I turn the camera off. So have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.